The next thing I want to show you is the DAW remote that the Montage and Modi X have for use with Logic. The first thing we're going to do is configure it on the Montage side. So I'm going to go to the home page of any performance and press the remote button. If you haven't done this before, then you'll need to go to settings and make sure that you're set to Logic Pro as the DAW and MIDI channel one. Next, we will tell Logic to expect the uh, control surface that the montage is going to provide. So we'll go to Logic Pro Control Surfaces Setup, New and Install. It'll give a list of all the different control surfaces that it has drivers for. We're going to filter that down to Mackie Designs, Mackie Control. Hit Add rather than hitting the suggested scan button because the scan button will uh, just make it sit there scanning stuff forever. Uh, in a fruitless search for something that it's never going to find. We'll just hit add and up comes the new control surface. There's only two things that you need to configure here. Um, the output port needs to be montage port two and the input port needs to be montage port two as well. When I select that, keep an eye on the track headers over on the left of the screen here. And you'll see that uh, they suddenly got um, a new bar of color next to the first eight tracks. That's telling you that those first eight tracks are now being controlled by this particular control surface. Um, I'm gonna change the color of that because uh, I can. And now we, this dark blue section is telling me that it's being controlled by the DAW remote. So what can we do with it? Well, in track mode, which is where we are at the moment, we have eight knobs and eight faders, which correspond to the volume level of the first eight tracks and the pan of each of the first eight tracks. You can see all of that moving around in the mixer down here. And uh, you now have essentially hardware controls for all of this stuff. And you can use this exactly as you might want it to. You also have the ability to do track selection. Uh, so let's, um, I, I know that the camera can only see the uh, first four buttons here, but if I were to click the top button here, and I'm afraid Modi X users, you are out of luck here, only the montage has this matrix. Uh, if I click the top button, that will select the first track. The second button is to mute the part. You can see that turning on and off. The third button is to solo the part. You can see that happening as well. And the fourth button is to set record arm on and off, uh, or it would be if there was an input source selected. Uh, so I can't do that. But if I were to select the second um, item and set record enable on that, you can just about see that happening. So in addition to these controls over on the matrix, you also have the transport controls. So we can start our project playing and stop it. We can fast forward and rewind. We can start it recording using the recording button. And we also have the ability, if we turn on the dial here, to use the dial as a shuttle for the entire project, which is really, really useful. We also have these track selection buttons here, which initially confused me because I thought that they were to change the selected track. But in fact, that's handled with the matrix over here. And what you actually use these for is to check which group of tracks you are working with. So right now you can see on the screen under the mixer here, we've got that blue bar under the first eight tracks. If I use the track right button, it's now selected the last eight tracks. So my final fader will now control the master volume there. Um, if you had 32 tracks, then you would be uh, selecting the first eight, the next eight, the third eight, and then the final eight. If you have a number that is not divisible by eight, then the last group will actually include the last um, track plus the previous eight, if that makes sense. The next part of the DAW remote I want to talk about is the plugin mode. So whereas track mode is designed for controlling the individual tracks, um, plugin mode is designed for controlling virtual instruments. So the way I've got this configured is uh, I'm actually using 
the control layout from Arturia's MIDI Control Center for the Keylab Essential 3 because that controller has nine knobs and nine faders, which is similar to what I've got here. I've got eight knobs plus the super knob and then eight faders, so I can replicate this fairly closely. And if I inspect each one of these knobs, I can see that that's sending data on MIDI CC 74, and the next one's on 71, 76, and then the faders use 73, 75, and 79, etc. So what that means is that I can set my montage up in DAW remote mode to replicate those controls and then I can use Analog Lab without any further configuration at all. So I'm going to select track 3 and record arm it. I'm going to open up Analog Lab and uh, you can see that uh, under the configuration here I've set it to expect a Keylab Essential 3 and here are the controls that it's expecting to allow me to use. Now to configure the montage to act like Keylab Essential 3 I'm in plugin mode I press edit and you can see that I've set the MIDI CCs for the fate for the knobs to replicate those for the Keylab Lab Essential and the same for the faders. Uh, just to say how to do that, we make sure that we're not using the dial or the cursor for remote. We click on one of these controllers. This is the uh, controller for the first fader. And then you can just dial in the number you need, which in this case was, I think, 73. Um, so once I've done that, I will hit done to say that I'm ready. And now I should be able to just turn these knobs and get real-time control of the instrument. Uh, let's hear that in action. Let's solo part three. Using the faders, I've got control of the envelopes here. So uh, this is the uh, first envelope. So you can see this is very much like having complete hardware control for each of these items. change to a different plugin. Let's uh, stop soloing that. I'll pick up the pad on track 5, record arm it, and then open up the plugin. And now I've got the same controls for that. we're not just limited to Arturia plugins, uh, we can use anything else as well. Uh, so let's have a new virtual instrument here and uh, hit create on there and I'm going to use complete control from Native Instruments and when I open the plugin there I've actually used MIDI Learn, uh, which uh, I'm not going to explain here, but I've used MIDI Learn to control each of these knobs using the um, the MIDI CCs that Arturia Keylab sends. Now you'll notice that I'm twiddling this and nothing's actually happening. The reason for that is that these knobs and faders control whichever track is currently record armed. And at the moment that's still the Jupiter pad, so if I turn that off and turn on complete control, now I get access to those knobs and faders. This works with any 
VSTs that allow uh, MIDI Learn for their um, controls, so you can get very down and dirty. And it is just like having hardware control for your virtual synthesizers.